Today we are once again attempting to become a living god in Skyrim, this time in the capital city of Solitude, of course without leaving the tall and intimidating outer shell to the home of the world's lamest college. Previously we attempted this challenge in Whiterun, and since everyone knows that the sequels are always better, Shady Sam has been deployed yet again to not just go from rags to riches, but to steal a college education and use that power to destroy the city in an attempt to answer the question, can you play Skyrim? without leaving solitude. Word seems to have spread about Sam's last mission, and the person narrating this currently is incredibly thankful that so many people saw that last video and had a good time watching it. Seriously, thank you guys, holy shit. Unfortunately for Agent Sam, in order to remain undercover, he has to change his tactics this time to stay undetected. That means no alchemy for profit and no one-handed weapon usage to make his fortune like last time. By following this step-by-step -step guide, I will ensure that you too can succeed as a secluded vagrant among the population of Solitude. And it starts the same as before, create a character, run through the intro, and console command your way up to Solitude after getting your Vines cut. Smell the roses as you walk into town, because you know the deal. God is throwing you into hell and tossing away the key. If you've come to Solitude to join the Legion, speak to Ricker. Do you really think that I would make a good recruit for the Empire? If we're hoping to obtain a college degree, we're certainly going to need to pay for it. Thankfully, there are many jobs you can sign up for right upon entering the city, like Execution Pickpocket, <laughs> Execution Grave Robber, Execution Pickpocket Grave Robber, who's such a loser, not even the guards want to take him to jail. Wait. I know you. No, 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 you're making a mistake. It was the other strange naked man running around town, please. You know what? You're not worth the hassle. After throwing on the clothes of a freshly executed Nord, the best method of making some quick cash is to piss off a store owner by stealing all of their stuff. Where are the people that own this place? Are they dead? Do they not work? Hello? We're here to teach you a lesson. What? Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Shit. Guards, guys, can't we talk about this? We can talk about this. We can. Oh, we can do your job. I'm being attacked by bandits. Through the castle. Go. We got to get out of here. Oh, I've been cornered. Go. <laughs> An education is more for me. Yeah, that's more my speed. I'm just gonna go to school. Oh! <laughs> but the fun doesn't stop there, because other fantastic employment opportunities exist in solitude, like, um, uh, rummaging through barrels, or being the arrow cleanup guy for the Imperial Archers. You're effectively screwed. Tuition is outrageously expensive, employment opportunities are nil. If your best paying job is coaxing heavily armored thugs into attempting to kill you, something has gone very, very wrong in your life. But this is a video game, so fuck it. No, not like this. Welcome to Thunderdome. <gasps> Now that you've scraped together some starting gold, you have officially entered into the middle class, which means it's time to get royally destroyed by student loans. I'm American, I can make that joke. The Bard's College is the single most disappointing piece of content in Skyrim, so ripping them off for thousands of gold worth in tuition is not just a noble crime, but a necessary evil to pay back this house of lies. Through a constant loop of pickpocket, train, pickpocket, train. This is so stupid. I love this. I can't believe this is working. <laughs> Just take it right back from him. You'll speed through a significant portion of the college experience and avoid drunken interactions with fraternity brothers. It's a win-win up until the point where tuition gets too expensive for you to buy any more training. Now you could do what most people would do and get a part-time job chopping wood until you realize that the only person who will pay you a decent wage lives outside of town. I know what you're thinking, dude, you could just pickpocket. You're right, of course you can just pickpocket if you want to have several hundred pounds of worthless items that you can't sell without a fence in town. So if you're going to pickpocket, you need to play it smart by pickpocketing enchanted jewelry from the royal court right in front of their faces. He's looking directly at me. <laughs> He's looking right at my dumb face. Excuse me, sir. I'd like to finish my bread in peace. There's nothing suspicious about a balding man in rags sniffing everyone's ass in the palace. Disenchanting these items and then kindly borrowing the blacksmith's leftover materials to create armor which you can then enchant and resell will be your best bet to get some more initial pocket change. Don't have any filled soul gems? Head over to the Solitude Catacombs where a grand battle featuring two whole skeletons awaits you. But I don't make these videos to show you how to make cheap money in Skyrim. We all know most of those answers. I make them because it's interesting to see how much of the Skyrim experience one can gain while region locked to a specific location. So how else can you make decent money in solitude without leaving the city? And without using alchemy because, come on, boring. The answer is going to take you underground.
Beneath the chapel in solitude lies a locked gate leading to a dungeon named Patema's Catacombs, the perfect opportunity to get some sweet, sweet legal loot. Usually opening this gate requires completing a prerequisite quest that would take you outside of town, so you're gonna get in the cool way. Oh my god, that's the closest we were, we were right there. Come on, basket. I believe in the wicker basket. Oh! <laughs> it worked! No way! <laughs> We're in! We're in! Yeah! This was the first time I'd ever attempted walling in Skyrim, so give me a break for being excited. It took like 30 minutes. Raise your hand if you didn't even know that this place was in solitude, because before the YouTube algorithm decided that region-locked Skyrim was apparently my niche, I had no clue that this dungeon was here. Now, before you can loot the place and escape with second semester's tuition, you gotta clear the dungeon first. Come on! Burn, baby! I don't like this. I don't like this one bit. I feel like the exit to this place we find is gonna take us out of town. This place is massive. This is cool though. Like there's an actual quest, there's an actual adventure. Whiterun just gives you two fucking skeletons and says, here you go. Ah, yes, another puzzle. My favorite part of Skyrim Dungeons. Take note of this puzzle involving three doors. It'll be crucial later on. No doubt you seek to enter Potema's sacrifice. You didn't see me. He went through his whole monologue and he's like, where the hell did he go? Maybe he's through here. Ah! Shit, shit, you weren't supposed to get up. Is he running? And then, no, no, there's no running. You can't run. I was supposed to execute you like a coward would. Stop swinging the sword. Stop. No more sword. Your sword is now banned. Jeez. Ma'am? Ma'am? Can we please not do this? Oh, Christ. Wait, hold on. I, uh, Avengers, help me. Can't kill me if I'm jumping around like a maniac. Come on, I got bounce. You don't have bounce. That's a problem with all you skeletons. None of you guys know how to jump. Oh, where's she going now? Whoa, where are you going? Where? Does she not want to fight? Is this something I said? So you've cleared the dungeon. Now it's time to head back and... No. Oh, shit. It does take us out of the city. Small problem. The only exit out of the catacombs takes you outside of solitude, thus failing the challenge condition. Remember that puzzle I mentioned before? After around a half hour of investigating this puzzle with Twitch chat, we came to a scientific discovery. When you solve the puzzle, the doors actually continue moving, albeit incredibly slow, but fast enough to block your return path by the time you complete the dungeon. So here you have two options. You can wait for several hours in real time for the doors to spin all the way back around, or you can run through the fucking puzzle without solving it. Oh my god. <laughs> we can actually get through. <laughs> we did it. You now have plenty of loot to fund your next semester at college, an experience under your belt that most other Skyrim players can't say they've had. Oh, and if you missed it earlier, you're also a vampire now. You just have to- Oh god, no, I- no, no, I forgot we have to do the wall thing on the way out. God help me. Why do I do this? Why did I start doing this? Why, why, why did we have to come down here? Why, why did I have to find out that this dungeon even existed? I was perfectly content nickel and diming my way to a college education. Now instead, I am slamming my face into a wooden plate over and over and over for like an hour and a half straight. That's been 90% of this damn stream. Go through the wall! As you can tell, I love wall glitching in Skyrim. Eventually after about an hour. Oh! Please let me through. Please let me through. Yeah! Yeah! We're free! Oh, oh my god, we did it! Oh man! But no, I probably shouldn't wear this sweater anymore. It's incredibly small. I'll be concise here to save some time. You'll need to sell everything that you can in order to continue stealing more education. However, that strategy will eventually cap out again because you can't pickpocket 3,000 gold even with a maxed out pickpocket skill. If we want to reach level 90 speech in order to sell stolen goods to any vendor we want and eventually dominate the minds of every NPC in solitude, as is our normal goal, we're once again going to have to move this experiment into part two. Because of the implication. Oh, uh... Did you really think we were getting through another one of these videos without an Always Sunny reference? Oh, you underestimate me. For all region-locked domination in Skyrim is a concise and scientific process. 
all of which can be linked back to the famed sitcom. In order to finish your training in spoken word, you're going to accrue a small bounty, say by stealing something right in front of a guard's face. Every two days in game, you will be able to persuade this guard to ignore your crimes. Right. All right. Next time I might not be so lenient. All right. Why would he continually ignore your crime, though? Ah, there's nowhere for me to run. What am I going to do, say no? Okay. Then. <laughs> <laughs> Not because he's in any actual danger, only that there exists an implication of danger if he doesn't do what I want him to. You see, I've skipped quite a bit of this entire process in the name of brevity, but in your spare time, if you're looking to become a bit more dangerous, hire Belrin to be your follower at the Winking Skeever, order him to wait in place right next to Noster Eagle Eye, the ironically named beggar who isn't too keen on locating the archer continually planting arrows in his skull. After some hours terrorizing but never killing these two practice dummies, you'll eventually be able to cause quite a scare among the town guards. Oh, and because your pickpocket is likely maxed out at this point, go ahead and disarm the guards while you're at it. Again, let me reiterate, they have no choice but to let you off the hook. Because of the implication. You've gone from sifting through barrels for scraps and performing public WWE, to phasing through physical objects and breaking Skyrim's puzzle mechanics. You've eaten the rich at the palace in more ways than one, and forced the guards in town to ignore your long-standing bounty. By now you should have easily maxed your pickpocket skill and gained level 90 speech, which means you're officially ready to learn something new about how Skyrim citizens operate on a much deeper level. I need you to pay attention now. Pull up a chair and take notes if necessary, because what I'm about to show you is something I didn't even know was possible. What if I told you that you you could trick Skyrim's AI into exploiting their own game from within. You're going to start this process by completing Sheagora's quest, which I must say is rather underwhelming, even though Wes Johnson still crushes it as the mad god Sheo. Clothes, check. Beard, check. Luggage. Of course, you do this to obtain the Wabajack Staff, a weapon that needs absolutely no introduction. You'll want to hold on to this for later. Now, imagine someone broke into your house and stole every single item that you owned, then showed up at your doorstep the very next day and had you buy every item back from them, and you don't even question it. Why? Because of the implication. Well, that's what you're going to do to every shopkeeper in town. Don't question my morals. Yeah, I'm even taking his potatoes. We're taking his dinner. No hot pocket for you, we're taking it. I didn't do it. You have committed crimes against Skyrim and her people. How about you look the other way? Come on. It's safe to say, after all that, that you're in control of the economy, and if you're lucky, not even the guards will be questioning you. You're now ready for your final mission, but before that, I'd like to highlight a few strange things that occurred in my 12 hours of living within Solitude that don't necessarily fit into this whole thing. Cade is an annoying child running around Solitude who constantly asks you, Hey, wanna play tag? I eventually felt bad for this kid, who all day, every day, is doing nothing but playing tag, and he seemingly has no other hobbies, so I finally caved, only to realize that Cade is a cutthroat psychopath who will do anything to win a game of tag. Hey, wanna play tag? Sure, dude, sounds fun. I teach poetry, writing history. Wait, did you just see that? Come on, tag me. Tag me, I bet you won't. <laughs> Cade, this is why no one wants to fucking play tag with you, man. You tag the dead guy in the middle of the street? Cade, <laughs> he's rising. <laughs> Completed. Earnscar Iron Hand is it. Keep Did he tag me? During one of our sessions, I angered an Argonian and got myself caught in a sticky situation. We fought indoors, but the damage I took in the fight resulted in the sun killing me as a vampire immediately upon stepping outside, thus resulting in a pretty entertaining autosave death loop. What in God's name just happened? <laughs> Holy shit, it's getting crazier. <laughs> Boom. Look at the height, look at the spin, the rotation. Back to the task at hand. Like last time, we want to aggro as many NPCs at one time and form the world's longest Congo line so we can set the Wabajack upon as many people as possible in one fell swoop. The planned route will start in the Solitude Marketplace. You'll head up to the Fletcher and Blacksmith, back down to the stores by the main entrance, you'll go through the Imperial Base, down the main road, and through the College, and you'll finally land here at the Blue Palace where you'll store every single weapon you can find in Solitude. Oh, yeah, I forgot to mention that part. In order to truly dominate solitude, you need to disarm every single person in town. Here we go. 
No weapons in my street. They're just wearing VR helmets. They're in the metaverse. I know you're keeping contraband somewhere in this place. Oh, oh, a dagger. Oh, oh, uh, multiple daggers. That armor you got rid of, I can have it, yeah? No, they're mine. Don't touch it. Well, what'd you go dropping it for? <laughs> I didn't even know that that was a dialogue in this game. Oh, also? The reason we do this is because Skyrim NPCs will seek out any and all weapons available to them if they're unarmed going into combat. I need to get through so I can aggro the store owner. Where the fuck did you get that sword, Angeline? Oh my god, Angeline executed me. So by pickpocketing every guard and clearing off the shelves in every store, you should be able to follow the route that we've set up, keep yourself alive, and aggro the highest number of people possible. What I didn't have in mind for this plan, though, was the NPCs cheating within their own game. I'm sure most Skyrim veterans understand this, but still, let me just explain what happened here. He's pulling out, he's pulling something out of somewhere. Where did you get the bow? <laughs> Under every merchant in Skyrim lies a chest that contains every item available for sale in that store. Typically, these chests are not available at all without some form of glitch or exploit. So in this current situation, we have these NPCs so desperate to find some tool to kill Agent Sam with, that they're breaking the rules of their own game to gain the upper hand and access a chest underneath every store we go into. That means that in order to truly disarm the populace, you'll have to buy out the weapon inventory of any merchant building you plan on entering when taking a route through town, attracting people to kill you. And to the best of our ability, that's what we did. After spending roughly 12 hours in total living in solitude, this was the final realization of our scientific experiment. Guards, I know you can't attack me. Where's he going? He's looking for a weapon. Oh, he got an axe. They're going They're going into this guy's inventory. They're searching the chest. They're searching the merchant's chest. Now, someone's going to come in here and get the fishing rod. I'm okay with that. Excuse me. Um, ma'am. Ma'am, I, I need your attention for something important. If, if you could... Oh, she took the fishing rod. Okay, we're good. She's aggroed. He's searching this merchant's chest. What did they have? Oh, a dagger? Okay, they only had a dagger. Are the guards still in here? What? The door's locked. Wait, they're locked inside. Hold on, I have to get these people out. They've just broken. They won't fight anymore. They're standing there. It's Attack of the Clones. Freeze! I command thee... Hey! I command thee... to stop. <laughs> okay, this is a pretty good crowd. This is about as big as the White Run crowd we had. Hey, Noster, get back here. No, 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 no. You're a part of this fight too, guy. There you go, get in here. Let's make sure we keep them all funneled. Hey, don't be running over there looking for weapons now. Don't be looking for swords. <laughs> they're, go they're all fighting over the daggers. Who's gonna get it first? They're all huddled around the exact same merchant stall. <laughs> stop. Everyone freeze. Freeze. Stop. You don't know what I've done for this city. I stopped the vampire menace underground. Come on. Single file line. Single file line, everyone. Look at it go. Look at them. It's an army. Oh, where did you get a bow? You son of a... Contraband! Contraband! What did I tell all of you about contraband? This guard's over here like, holy shit, what did I miss? Hold on, I'm coming, guys! <laughs> oh my god, she had a dagger! They're, they're robbing the dead now. They're so desperate for weapons. This is the most entertaining sequence that the Bard's College has ever seen in Skyrim history. Oh shit, they're looking for something. Are there really more weapons in the school? Yeah, this is for all the shitty tuition prices you guys charged me earlier. I've got you like a horse! Be respectful, put the sword away. Hey, 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 no one else in your class has a sword. You can't bring a weapon unless you can share with everyone. Now, guys, I can only sign one autograph at a time. I need you to back it up. I feel like Toby McGuire trying to drive his car out of a parking garage. Get out of my kind, my kind. Oh, God, I can't get through. Oh, no. Hey, hey, don't get mad at me. I know something you see every day. Well, that's not something you see every day. Let's check the local map. Solitude, sol yes, there is. There's an alternate exit. Holy shit! The basement. Who, who called the? Who called that? The basement. You're. I love you. Okay, we can do this. I'm just gonna watch them now. <laughs> They're all going for weapons now. Oh shit! Everyone's armed. <laughs> oh, he got the executioner's axe. <laughs> Wabajack! Wabajack! <laughs> They're fighting each other. They're fighting each other now. Why is there a mud crab on the ground? There's a damn Dramora! What's... what's happening? <laughs> Run, rabbit! Run! Go, free! Get out of here! No! Hey, wanna play tag? Well, don't you look at me like that. You certainly wouldn't be in any danger. So they are in danger. No one's in any danger. Gotta show up if you wanna get it done. Gotta show up if you wanna get it done. If you wanna get some shit done, bitch, you gotta show right up and do that shit.